My name is Josh from Apple Valley, uh, Apple Valley Communications. There's five labs in this building. This is the master lab station. This system can watch the cameras in every single room, so he can be in a central station. Uh, we added that on there. I don't know if that was designed for that, because I know eventually they want to add a TV. So we added that. I also put the software on there, so he has access to the cameras as well. Each one of the control rooms has a microphone to talk to the speakers overhead and also the speaker behind the patient. The control room also has access to viewing the cameras in all the labs and also the observatory is showing just the cameras in the room that they're observing. Um, in a second we'll go in the control room and we'll go over everything and I'll show you guys how to use the microphone and audio. Uh, but the login on the computers for the camera system is you log into the computer under whatever username you have to record. There, there's no real high security in them. They're just viewing their actual stations. So it's just a default password is to get in. It's already pre-logged in. They just have to double click to open it. But as IT feels necessary to change that, they can. But there's really no need. There's nothing that they can access on there to change or do anything to the system. So we open for questions here? Is that yeah. You, okay. Uh, you said ONSSI, right? Yes. So are we doing the recording of these rooms on ONSSI? Is that the... Um, I have no clue how you guys are doing the recording. I don't know that they're recording. Yeah, that wasn't part I of... I think it's streaming. Okay. It's just, just streaming? It's okay. just live streaming. Okay. I, I heard that they were planning on putting a software on the computers that locally monitors and records the desktop so they can do annotation. Now it's going to be because it's under someone else's name. They're, they would go to views up in the top right and they're going to go to allied health and science labs. That's all they have access to. So all the other cameras are on the system but all these users on these have access to the labs. That's it. So they have labs, direct labs, 139, 142, 146, 149, and 140, or 153. Those are the actual rooms. So if we pull those up, you're only going to get the two cameras in the actual room. So somebody brought up the question. They said they thought the cameras on the ceiling were not working. No, they're all working. Okay. So I wasn't, okay. Just what somebody brought up yesterday. Master of Labs. This is for, uh, I forgot the gentleman's name, Richard, I think. Whoever is going to be... Robbie Evans. Robbie. Robbie. Okay, Robbie. Robbie probably using the Master Labs the most. What it does is it has five different focal points. So if his main room that he's watching is 139, he's going to pull up 139, and the two larger windows are going to be 139, but it still gives him access to view the other rooms so that he can monitor them slightly, mm -hmm. and he can switch between views if he needs to. So... He can change things as he goes. Also, same thing. He has another window here. If he feels necessary, he can pull up another one. Like, say, 139 was here, but 146 are using also. He could pull up 146 also if he would like. Well, they're not here to get this training. Or, 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 or the folks that are going to be in here. That's uh, for the IT instructors? Yeah. No. They're going to get the video. Video. Okay. okay. The logins, though, I'm going to email to them. Marcus today so that he okay. can give them the logins necessary. The only downfall that there is on the system is the actual TVs in the observatories. I have to set that up with a wireless mouse because they haven't got their splitter yet. So the, we're waiting for Tim to get the display port splitters. Yeah, we've got them. They're sitting in my office. But you have to select it what they want to watch, but you can't do that from that room because you can't see the TV. So I just brought a wireless mice with me, a mouse with me to the window okay. and selected it. So that works for now. So they can just select the lab. So pretty much for the actual software, that's all he's going to be able to do. He can also, I don't think they can browse. Pretty sure they can. So that can be turned on though. That's up to, that's really up to Marcus to allow access to that. I know that that's a kind of a security. All right, these rooms have two speakers. There's one in the ceiling and there's one on the wall. This one is the patient speaker. It is designed where they can talk also through one channel through the patient speaker if they need to, or they can also plug in a audio of like breathing sounds, anything that they want to to that 3.5, and it plays through this speaker. Anything that's going on in this room is being picked up 
on the microphones. There's two microphones as well, one here and one here. These microphones pick up everything. So next door observatory, they're listening to it loud and clear. Control room's turned down a little bit so it doesn't cause feedback with the microphone. This is a fixed camera. It is pretty much stationary looking down the bed frame. The PTZ though, they have control of movement of wherever they want to move, zoom in. Um, in a second, we're going to go into the room and I'll show you how to operate the microphone and also the, where they can plug in the audio cable. Um, if one person wants to stay in here to, to make noise so they can hear it in the other room, maybe one of the maintenance guys. They should be able to hear that. Yeah, they'll be able to hear that, but any talking, you'll be able to hear too. So. In the control booth, this is their control PC. This is where they're going to be viewing the cameras. I don't think this is the computer that's running the actual dummy that's in there. That's not our company, that part. On the wall, on the left-hand side, usually it's the left-hand side, but there's a volume control. This controls the speaker volume in the control room. You don't want it too loud in here or else your audio is going to loop through to the microphone when you're talking. Every one of these rooms has a microphone with two channels, zone one and zone two. If they're pushed up, they are not selected. If you push zone one, microphone check, check one, two. Welcome. <laughs> so there's two zones. One is the ceiling and one is the, the wall speaker. So they can, they're probably not going to be talking through the wall speaker, but it's there for if they need it. There's also a 3.5 on this wall. This is for them to play any audio sounds they want through that wall speaker, the patient speaker. So that's probably for their breathing noises. I, that's what I most likely am going to say that's for. So zone one and two need to be selected, whatever one they want to speak out of, and push to talk. That's really about all there is for talking. But anything that's going on, you're picking up the audio. If you notice, you're hearing everyone. Um, in the other room is the TV that's going to be picking up the video signal in here, which we'll see if we'll be able to do that. It's the same Ocularis software on this camera or on this computer as it is on any of the other ones. They just have to log in with their username and password. And these are the four computer, uh, four cameras in the actual digital lab. So right now. We've already seen the cameras all working in these labs. Now I'm showing you the other four. And then we'll do the exterior cameras as well. The people that are using in here are really just going to be viewing the labs. They're just going to use that master lab. Is that correct, Marcus? Yeah, they aren't going to be doing anything technical. They'll be able to do all like the zoom in, zoom out capabilities. And I'm not sure if they can take screenshots. But um, if they're coming to issue me right, you can just call us and we'll send them the file. But, um, it's pretty much all they need to do is just view.